Hello and welcome to my video where I showcase how to quickly get our Elysium project going on. We have it right here and yeah I thought I would take you by the hand and step by step to show every single decision that I make and explain it to this time around. And if everything goes well then we should end up pretty much with this uh, with lots of wealth to go by and lots of science um, not too much though not too much science if we have too much science then that will reflect on our wealth and the legion project is researched so let's see how that goes and before before i start i still have to credit one of the people on discord who actually kind of suggested this type of strategy with silthids and um, energy usage. No, not all of the things that I show here are kind of <laughs> originally thought of by me, so... But I did kind of perfect the strategy and ended up in the first place for the weekly ranks. So let's see how we do. Let's see if I actually remember everything. I did end up with this map just a while ago, so I should be should be able to do it. So yeah, this is the week 9 tough map. And as you can see, I scored the first place. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get the Elysium project as fast as I'm going to right now. So probably I could have gotten a better score too, but time's up. And let's take um, the Matori, of course, for the science. I'm not gonna take any of the science perks here, though, because we will be fighting for money with every single step we take. And I'm gonna take Growth by the Tender. So planets producing people or foods pay no upkeep. That's gonna help the economy. And also gonna take the Joint Factories, since we are actually playing on a map with decrepit runes, which means that some of the remnants, or actually all of the remnant planets, do not produce bots, and bots are kind of crucial if we want to get the Elysium project going, which requires each type of resource. And yeah, the bots or the joint factories actually have great synergy with um, some energy production. I'll show that later too. So here we are, the Tori, Dender, and the Silphids. And off we go. Maybe one more thing to mention. Uh, this will not be shown in in this video, but uh, the Silphids are also important for skill downloads, which works really, really well. Well, first of all, with the Elysium project again, because we can just um, double, well, not double up, but create more resources to use. And um, the skill downloads can also um, produce more culture on planets, so that's why Siltids are so good together with the Dender. Uh, the skill downloads perk is not always on the Siltids, so sometimes I think it's also a Torit tech? Yeah, I think it is. But here, in this particular playthrough, um, they're on the Siltids, so that's also why one of the reasons why Siltids are so good here. So, let's start. And the start is extremely important. <laughs> well, everything is extremely important here if we're gonna get our Elysium project by year 12. And notice how I will not scan this one little planet here, because I know it's a Forge World, and if I scan too many Forge Worlds, that will later on reflect on the Silthid um, tasks that will they will give. Um, and I want to manipulate those tasks to to have the tasks that I want. So now I only scanned one Forge World, and I know this map in advance, and I know that I want to get over here to this area, so in order to get there, I kind of need to colonize one extra planet. Um, I'll use the chips and the bots later, but for now, this is just kind of a uh, scouting planet, so to say. I'm gonna colonize the ocean planets and the remnant planet first. 
And if I can connect those two, they'll form a pretty good trade route. Um, so the remnant plant will send, send ore to the ocean, and the ocean sends people to the remnants. So early on, I already get some revenue, at least. Not much, but that's a good start. Um, and now we'll take the tasks. And I'm gonna take biomass slab, and I'm also gonna take the dender colonization task. Um, I'm not taking the silted forge welds. I'm gonna take it much, much later. There are some priorities here. <laughs> uh, kind of tough to explain some of the things here, some of the choices that I make, but it all will work out in the end. So now we will scan a new area here, all of these three planets, all of these are important. We will colonize the Gaia worlds and get some food, create a little loop here. So now I got 18 uh, wealth per year, or 18 credits per year from trade, that's pretty good. And since I only got two months left, I can't really... Um, if I want to colonize the planets, that'll take three months, so that'll skip right to the next year. So there's one little trick how I can still generate some more income. Which is uh, by building this space-time stabilizer around here and connecting chips to it. Surprisingly, connecting chips that way will generate extra income, as you will see in a moment. Uh, this is costly. The space-time stabilizer cost me 10 credits, but since we're connected to this Earth-like later on, um, this is just an investment in the future. And let's see, I need to place this correctly so that this connection is 3 and this is 6. This is necessary because... <laughs> I'll be at zero credits many, many times, and I don't want to skip any months, so yeah, everything's planned out. So the stabilizer is here, and notice how our wealth goes from 18 to 21, so um, yeah, we get some revenue from that. Now I'm gonna colonize the Earth-like, connect some people here, connect this water, and I'm not going to connect the food yet. I'm going to refrain from this connection. And the reason is the dendro will give me a task later to promote um, food producing planets to successful. So if I connect right now, this planet will be successful right away. And this is not what I want. I want to spare that planet. I want to spare that upgrade. Even at the cost of money. I mean, I'm losing six credits per turn if I don't connect this. Uh, six credits per year, I mean. Anyway, I'm not gonna do this. Instead, I'm gonna scan here. I'm gonna grab an asteroid, because we'll need some money, colonize the forge wells, and send the ore in. Upgrade the remnant planet too. So, pretty good wealth even without um, the food connection on the left side. Now I colonize on the left, uh, on the right side. Um, I'm gonna take the wetland farm. The good thing about this multi-purpose factory is that it can send bots and chips to the food planets right away. So I'm um, kind of generating two exports at once and that really reflects on the wealth. See, 25 goes into 33. Really nice. Now, um, I'm still willing to get the biomass lab. And I know there are some planets over here that will indeed create some, or generate some biomass for my lab. So I'm gonna colonize the art first, connect the foods, now I don't really have any more money, so I have to grab an asteroid, and I'm going to colonize the Earth-like here. 
Here we also have uh, a two-way connection, people to the Earth-like, Earth-like to the Arids, I mean the water on the Earth-like. Meanwhile, the biomass still stays uh, for for the lab that I'm gonna get really, really soon. So, now we have enough biomass and we have some people here as well to create a lab. There's also an Earth-like over here that I'm gonna connect to later, so I need to mine that while I build the lab. And I'm also gonna scan for the cheapest connections. See, this is like four credits, and now this is eight. I need I need to get it to seven. That's seven. I also need to see that this plan is over here doesn't block my connection to the Earth like that's currently hidden. But it doesn't seem that way, and it seems like oh, we will connect with four. The actual plan is actually a bit larger size than this um, this signal. So even though it might look like the connection is five credits, it will still be four. So seven, three, and three, and we got ourselves the lab just before the end of the year. Got a start with our science. Now I only need to colonize one more different planets to get the dendro task done, and that's gonna be the mineral planets over here. And new tasks are unlocked. One of them is get two more food producing planets to successful. That's the one we want. And we'll also get some credits as soon as we complete that task. So that's really, really important. And I'm gonna invent two new technologies since we got some science going on. So off we go. First connection, first successful um, planets on the left side. Now we need just one more and it's gonna be right here on Thresham 6. I'm gonna scan this way um, because I don't want this weak signal over here and this is just a lava planet so um, I don't really need to scan it. So this makes the most sense. We're gonna colonize the Earth-like connect the foods and here we have it just in time um, got 40 credits I was down to two credits so right now I have 16 credits and this connection costs me 14 so if I if I tried to do something else then I couldn't afford pretty much anything but now I get the dental task done and I get all the credits so now I can continue connecting stuff Hmm. Notably, this connection is equally good as this one. It's kind of crazy to think about it. I thought like that um, upgrading a planet would be worth more, but it actually isn't. If you take a look, 48 per year goes into 52. And this goes into 52 as well. But this connection is cheaper. Right, and now I actually remember that <laughs> I'm not gonna take that connection. Oh, this planet is also upgraded to, to uh, successful, so probably that's why this connection is so good. Right, never mind then. Never mind then. One of those planets always upgrades. But I'm not gonna connect this because I will need the months. Meanwhile, I will connect to the lab because I will need the extra science points this year, still. Now, um, I have this Vittori task, and for the Vittori task, I need to get the freeze-resistant bots. I can get them right now. And next year, I will need eight science uh, to to get a second tech, which is the solar superconductors. And I'll I'll only have seven, so I'll need to get some more science from somewhere. 
which will be the four bear runes on the left side. Which this connection gives me plus two science. And later on, I will also rebuild the power plants and get some energy going. This energy will then substitute the goods which are unmet on the ocean planets. This is also really important. See? There's like uh there's so many things, so many levels going on in every single uh, decision here. Not only do I get the science, but this connection also uh, makes sense for the future. But now I can complete the the Tori task and get new ones. And we're finally back to the Forge World's planet upgrades from the Silphids. And now it's really easy to do. I'm also going to upgrade the Remnant planets to Prosperous. The Dender tasks are kind of ridiculous sometimes. <laughs> uh, production of food by 10 units, never going to happen. And the Remnant planet that's gonna, that we're going to upgrade is this one uh, over here. I'll show what we need to do for that. Well, actually, um, it needs three successful planets, three successful trade partners, and we only have one. So that means I need to make this forge world successful, which is done just like this, and also completes the silted task. And I'm also going to take some energy here and send send the energy to Arknos, and Arknos will upgrade to successful as well. Um, but I don't think I, I don't think that was the time to do that yet. I think what I first needed to do is to colonize the desert planets on the right side. This will generate some, some wealth since we're sending the chips and the bots in. So see how it goes from 48 to 61 per year. That's a pretty good increase. And once we send the energy in, that goes to 66. So from 41 to 66, difference of 25 credits. It's kind of uh, ridiculous. Also, um, this was kind of important since the energy will later on get me more chips um, that I will need. There'll be this energy-driven industry tech, which says planets and structures receiving energy have their production increased by one unit on each product. So that means that I'll have more chips. And also, this planet upgrades from successful to prosperous, which also creates more chips. So right now, if I only use the chip available... Mm, mm, how to explain this in advance? Uh, I'll need space-time stabilizers. I need two of them. One of them on the right side here, and the second one up here to connect to the planets that's currently hidden. And I only got one chip, and I can't get the second chip if I do not upgrade the planets, and there's no better way to upgrade the planets than connecting it to Freya 4. That was a pretty lengthy explanation, but there's, once again, lots of layers uh, in, in these decisions. Alright, so we got this, we got some good income. Um, next thing, we'll still need to grab more wealth. Before our empire size becomes unbearably large, like once we hit um, the next empire size, our wealth will drop. So before that happens, we actually need to connect to the ruins over here and grab the money that's hidden inside. Um, 
the reason why I should do it before the empire size changes is because if we have more wealth generation, we'll get more wealth from ruins as well. And there is a second reason to connect to those ruins as well, um, which is science. <laughs> There's all, always multiple reasons. It's kind of funny. Uh, didn't really occur to me how how many how many of these decisions have multiple things to them. All right. So let me let me just make sure I do everything correctly. Seven months. So the idea, yes, the idea is to get this space-time stabilizer first. That creates some revenue as well. And I got five months remaining. And my idea was, yes, to scan this area. Notice again how I do not scan this signal, which contains a forge world, um, in order to create in order to get mm, the silted task that I want later. And I connect here. Three months. And I don't think I had to do anything else before colonizing because that will waste precious time. Because I could, I could connect here, for instance, um, and I still have some wealth remaining, but time will be of of some importance here. So I'm just gonna call nice. And now we're gonna connect to the roots first. I'm also going to rebuild this rune. Upgrade this planet, get a lab, and now we have upgraded the remnant planets, which already had three successful or better planets, but it still needed one more export. So what could be better to export than or to a lab? And yeah, that task is done, and see how now the silted task is not um, not upgrading forge welds because there is only one forge weld that hasn't been upgraded to prosperous. So if I had scanned, if I had scanned one more forge welds, it would have given me a task to upgrade those two forge welds, and that's not the task that I wanted. Instead, I wanted the chip task since I'm going to be building a chip lab over on this side and I can invent the three technologies that will be easy as well since we'll have a lot of science very soon. Right, so next thing yeah next thing I'm gonna connect here Gonna have some more wealth before grabbing the runes here. By the way, if you're wondering why why I didn't grab the money before building this lab, it's because upgrading these two planets was actually improving my wealth. If you take a look, oh, you can't take a look anymore. But yeah, since I took a look at the tasks, but. Anyway, there's more wealth um, in my accounts or in my bank right now than it there was before. And I'm gonna gather everything now. And I still have time for a new lab. And the lab will be built right here. On the right side. Why here? Because there are some people <laughs> and I need the extra extra lab points or extra science points from there. Right, I'm also gonna take the quantum computing um, 
which will upgrade all of my labs. Note how I have 18 signs right now and connecting to this rune actually got me two extra signs. So before connecting to this rune, I did not have enough for quantum computing. And also before completing the Vatori task, I didn't have enough for quantum computing because the Vatori task actually reduces um, or gives me a tech discount of 20%. So it used to cost 21 science. Now it only costs 17 and it's affordable and we can get more science faster. Great. See how it bumps from 7 to 13. Almost doubling the science. Great. Now we got two more months. Um, we will be colonizing this remnant planet and this Earth-like soon enough. Um, not only because we're going to generate some chips here and get a lab that uses those ships, but also because those are Isium planets and colonizing them yields three tech or three science per colonization. And we need that science. So here we are. We got 12 months colonizing these two will um, colonizing these two will give me six and my ultimate goal is to get the self-hosting AI this year so I need 16 science now how do I get 16 science I get three here I'm generating chips I also get Three here. Also note how my wealth just plummets from 53 to 33 as soon as I increase my empire size. Alright, and now I got six more months. And now, now I want to show why the infrawave stations can be so great. They can be so great because you can scan to areas that are far, far away without having to colonize um, planets first. Um, there are actually many other reasons why um, why these stations are so good. Well, you also spare time um, scanning all of these would probably take two more months than it took with the infrared station but yeah um, they're not easy to use but if you know how to use them they're really really powerful they can like think about time dilation right time dilation increases the number of months each year by one and later on by three but these sex costs lots of lots of science. Meanwhile, infrared detection costs 12 science. Well, in my case, 10 because I got the discount too. Um, and you can just save months just as efficiently without having to scan multiple times. So yeah, the infrared stations really, really can be a game changer sometimes. Anyway, here we are. We have the interface station whoops, planted. And the idea is to colonize the Earth like. Got two more months. We just have enough time to connect to the rune over here and get, first of all, two signs from the rune. And secondly, eight signs by learning about the forebearer culture. And now we got exactly 20 signs. See how this one little connection earlier mattered? Because otherwise I could have planted um, a lab over here on the left side um, and have much shorter connections, way less costly ones. But this is <laughs> this is how I get the extra science points um, that, that I need. And now I can get the self-hosting AI and bump my science from 
per year to 19 per year. And also get the tech. Great! So, what now? I got 60 wealth. It's December. Now we need to colonize some stuff over here. And... And once we do that... Once we do that... We'll be really... Um, really close to the leasing project. Once again, I'm going to use the infoway station for some quick scans. Don't really need to use it here, because um, I only need a few planets over there, but still going to do it. Like, I'm going to stop midway once I get the Elysium project done, but um, with this infoway station, it gives me access to mineral this mineral planets and the forge world planets as well so it's kind of way more efficient to scan this way once again so yeah colonize the remnants we need to increase the chip amounts which is exactly what we're doing and actually before i connect to to this remnant planet increasing the chip amounts yet again i'm gonna show how the energy driven industry will bump up my production. So I'm gonna take this um, and see how this energy over here will, I mean, this planet has energy and this planet will get energy as well. So see what happens once I get the energy driven industry Boom, we have the extra chip. And now we connect here. And we have the extra chip again. Now it's five out of six. And we connect again. And we get the task done. Great, don't you think? I think this is great. <laughs> right, so. Now I got um, new tasks. We will improve the yearly science output, and mm, I'm always debating whether I should take one of these tasks or which which one of the tasks I should take. But it doesn't really matter here because we'll get the Elysium project earlier anyway. So I'm gonna just take the silted task, and yeah. Right now, my science is pretty great, but my wealth is not. So, you'll notice how as soon as I build this lab here, let's actually get it a bit higher, maybe. I don't know. Four, three, okay. I'm gonna try and spare some money because. I think all I need here is 5 per year. Maybe it was actually 6. Yeah, I think I still need just a bit more science. Yes. I can I can also revert back to this this time later. Let's see. I'll try to get the best possible connections anyway. So four, four, three, five, three, five, three. Well, let's go with three, five, three. It's December. Getting six science per year. Thirty-four. I'm just trying to calculate, because I'll need fifty-nine science by the end of the next year and just trying to think here that'll give me three science as well because I'm gonna colonize the earth like 34 34 plus 25 equals 
nine. Yeah, I don't need this connection. I don't need this connection yet. And the reason um, I'm not taking this connection is um, I actually want to connect some other stuff and just get some revenue going. Just like this. Right, now I colonize the Earth like. We need to get some um, water. You might notice how this planet here, which is the Elysium planet's contender, or <laughs> I'm planning to get the Elysium project here, it has all the other resources. It has ships and bots on standby, you can just connect here. It has biomass, but no water. This water was exported to Dother 5. <laughs> Not really sure how to actually pronounce this. Is this some kind of a writer? Because I re I remember the the planet names actually are taken from somewhere like Odysseus. Some of those are writer names. Anyway, gotta generate some water here. We'll connect, and now I got fourteen. Credits remaining. Hmm. Yeah, I think last time I actually took an asteroid. Wonder if I actually need to do it this time too. I got a bit more credits than I had last time. I can also get this connection later. I can spare the wealth for the time being. This ups my wealth by four, but this connection is really costly. Just wonder if I have something better to do. Something better to connect. Yes, I do. In fact, in fact, I have this and this, and this will up my wealth a little bit. Four months. Let's connect there, and oh, wait a sec, no, um, the idea was to scan this area and colonize the planet here, because once we get the Elysium project, um, we'll have very, very little money, and there's a rune on the right side, which will Give us some extra. Uh, I can't colonize this yet. Ah. Uh. Dang. I was supposed to colonize there. But I guess I'll have to take the asteroids. What can I say? <laughs> it's fine. We're wasting some time. But maybe with a little tweak somewhere. Um. I could have just colonized this and didn't really have to waste time on the asteroids, but who cares? Now we can connect like this, and oh, actually no, <laughs> I still need to colonize instead because I will not have enough enough money for colonization if I connect that way. So get the colony. Get this, get that, and the Elysium project. Oof. Alright, so I'm having some money problems here. I was supposed to connect to this rune too, but after the Elysium project, uh, that's a little bit awkward, actually. This is a little bit awkward. 
it seems like scanning this area in advance was a, mis was a mistake. Instead, I should, should have just grabbed um, the asteroids and connected these two planets. So now, I mean, I'll still get the result that I want, but I'll get way less money from the runes. That is unfortunate. Yeah, that is that is really unfortunate actually. Ah because this Elysium Elysium project would have given me so much. Wonder if there's an asteroid that I can grab from somewhere. I think there is. Yeah, anyway, I think um, uh, I think I'll just be happy with with the lesser amount of money. It's kind of sad that I didn't get the amount that I wanted, but I'll get 30 instead of like 50. It's still okay. We can still get the Elysium project done, still got the wealth to to do stuff for the last seven months. I can for instance colonize the mineral planets. I was hoping to like connect this already uh, but now now we're a bit strapped for money so I'm gonna lose like three extra signs from this year but it's fine you can just colonize here for instance and uh, and here too whatever can't afford that huh but yeah it's year 12 and the Elysium project uh, the Elysium Planets or Elysium proje Project is over here and it's done and that's what matters and we got some good wealth generation anyway so can't complain about that Yeah, that's about it. 100 wealth generation per year. There'll be a science lab coming down below, getting all of those ships to work. Now it's gonna take a bit more time since I have a bit less wealth than I had uh, the last time I tried this. But, we still made it, it's, yeah, the Elysium project still was complete on year 12, got good science counts, it's kind of easy to continue from here. And yeah, unfortunately, um, I was not able to get that Elysium project done earlier, I was really close, and I was also not able to to get it on year 12 when the score still did count and now I'm a bit late I'm like four hours late <laughs> uh, so I could have continued from here could have tried for like a hundred K score that's the goal that I had set up and maybe I will at some point but right now I hope I've showed I've showcased enough and maybe You've learned a thing or two. Um, yeah, I'm gonna bid farewell and thanks for watching and see you next time.